friends, it's a little bit chilly today. A little cold. Definitely a little cold, but guess what we're gonna do? See how we have this one row of compost down? If you were watching the past two videos, uh, one of them we spread that compost. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other two rows here just to get it done. But in the meantime, while we're working, but in the meantime, while I'm working, I thought I would share the 10 items or things I don't like to put in my compost. This right here is my big compost pile and uh, it's looking good. It's looking really good right now actually. But there are things that you don't want to put in compost and here are my top 10. Hopefully this will save you some heartache and some problems down the road with your compost by not adding these types of material that could potentially be harmful for your garden, for you, for your soil, whatever it is. First thing you don't want to add to your compost is dog poo. Dog poo is already a little nasty. You know, you smell it and it's like, whoa, you don't want that in your garden. But the reason why, oh, I forgot to mention that really in all of these 10, I'm gonna to try to explain to you the reason why you don't wanna add these items. You know, a lot of times you see a list of things not to add to your compost and you're like, but why? Like, why is that not working? So I'm gonna help you understand the reasoning behind all these 10 items that you don't wanna to add to your compost. So the reason you don't use dog poo or cat poo is that it has a lot of parasites in it. Oftentimes parasites that can also get into us humans. So when we add that to the compost, even though the compost might get even hot, might still have parasites that would transfer over to your garden. You step in the garden or you eat something from the garden and you get a parasite. Then number two is oils. You don't want to add oils to your garden because when you add those oils, they tend to become like a coating around the already existing compost material that you have, whether that's you know kitchen scraps or wood chips or leaves, whatever it is. And that coating of oil prevents water from penetrating and getting into those environments. So you need water in order to have decomposition. So it becomes like a restrictive layer of oil that does not allow decomposition. Any type of cooking oil or motor oil, don't add that because it's just gonna cause problems and slow down your decomposition. This next one is kind of similar to the one we just mentioned with oil. It's uh, coated or glossy paper or paper products. You know, basically any paper product that has that gloss, silky, you know, like uh, plasticky feeling layer over it, that's not good to add for the same reason for, that you don't add oil because it really slows down the de decomposition process and you end up not really getting much benefit from that paper. Also, who knows, there could be all kinds of harmful dyes and, and chemicals in that coating. So just go ahead and avoid any paper that has a glossy coating on it. No, no on the glossy paper. Next item on the list is right here, grass clippings. Now I don't treat my yard with any type of uh, herbicide or any type of fertilizer, but a lot of lo yards are fertilized and sprayed with chemicals to keep weeds from coming up in your fescue or Bermuda grass yards. If your yards are sprayed, you really want to avoid those grass clippings, those yard clippings, because pretty self-explanatory, you're going to be adding in those synthetic, potentially harmful chemicals. A lot of the chemicals, like the herbicides that they add, are specifically targeted for killing all plants other than the type of grass that you've got. So that usually includes a lot of the vegetable crops. Anytime you've got a yard that's been treated, don't add that. Same thing for hay or any type of like uh, grass material. By the way, thanks for joining in on this little conversation while I'm working. 
it's a lot more fun to work with people than not. I know you're not physically here, but you know, you're out there, y'all are all listening. I'm getting to share a few tidbits. Also, at the end of this video, if you want to comment with any of your observations or things to not add to compost, by all means, I love it. I love, oh, I can't breathe. Man, I need, I need to get more in shape. This is bad. Shouldn't be breathing like this. Whew. Anyways, I love whenever we comment and post and add in things. Currently, I've been having a hard time keeping up with all the comments because I'm trying to do a video a day. But never fear, I'm gonna be coming back in and responding to everybody's questions and concerns, comments, and I really wanna keep up to date with that because it needs to be a conversation between me and you guys and between you all, all together too. Next one up on the list is walnuts. Walnuts and walnut trees and clippings and all that stuff. You really don't want to add too much walnut material. What's funny about that is right above me right here, this guy is actually a walnut tree. So clearly I'm getting some walnut branches and leaves in my garden compost right here, but the quantity is not enough to really make a serious difference. I just wouldn't collect leaves from underneath a walnut tree. I wouldn't try to plant a garden underneath a walnut tree. And uh, the reason is, the reason being, that walnut has a compound called juglone, and that can potentially be harmful and just prevent plants from growing underneath walnut trees or anywhere that walnut debris is. Let's see if the garden guy can multitask very well. Let's see, we got one hand with this lean, mean, green machine, and one hand with you guys as the camera. Here we go. Ready for this? Yeah. Ooh, missed it. Yeah. Nice. Next one up on the list is clothing. Gotta be careful what clothing, like old clothing, you know, that you're adding to. Oh, this is all tough. It's a workout right here. Whew. Any old clothing that you're adding, you really only want to do all natural clothing, like cotton or wool. Things like that, linen. Oh, one-handed, one-handed, oh no. Man, we lost most of that. But not really polyester, of course. That's a bad choice. Also, usually there's tags and buttons and all that kind of stuff that really won't decompose very well. If you are gonna use clothing, you really wanna put it more inside of the compost pile because that'll make sure it stays wet at all times and it'll break down a little faster but really it's not the best option for what to compost, but it is compostable. Just make sure there's no synthetic materials in your clothing that you're using for compost. Let's see where are we at on this list. I think we're at number seven. Number seven would be, do not add plants that have been diseased. Diseases are spreadable just by composting. I mean, if you have really hot compost and if you do it perfectly right, a lot of times you can kill most of those diseases or pests or anything that was attacking that plant that did not thrive. But a lot of times with our composting, especially like, you know, slow composting where we just add kitchen waste over time and it kind of slowly breaks down, a lot of times that's not the best idea we don't want to add any type of diseases that have attacked our plants back into our compost pile because they're going to just come back out into the garden and be wrecking havoc the whole time once again. Careful to not really add material that's going to be potentially harmful for the next generation of plants. Like I remember back in the day growing up in the mountains, we had a neighbor and his name was Mr. Curthers. He was really one of the main first people to inspire me in gardening. I'm sure I'll talk about him more later. He was uh, about 70 something I think at the time and I remember he would always tell me, you know, when you're growing your tomatoes, he would always tell me not to take the tomato vines and put it back in the garden. They removed those tomato vines. And I didn't understand at the time, but now I understand that a lot of tomato problems come from diseases from the previous plants. Might as well just go ahead and not put that material in your compost piles.
And the last three that I'll mention are numbers, let's see, eight, nine, and 10. Those are any type of animal product. So like chicken, beef, you know, meat, eggs, fish, all that stuff. If we add those to compost piles, honestly it works as far as composting goes, but the one caveat is a lot of times that will attract pests. And a lot of times that will attract all kinds of, you know, smelliness. You got maggots in there. You get all kinds of like uh, animals coming in, scratching around your compost. But some instances, if you have a massive composting situation going on, you can dig a, a big hole and you can put your meat scraps in there, cover it up, and over time it'll break down. Meat honestly does have a lot of nitrogen in it and a lot of, and it breaks down fairly quickly because it's so fresh. You know, it's just like boom. But the thing is, you really don't want to add it if it's gonna be a problem for your area. If it's gonna smell bad, if the pests are gonna come in, that kind of thing. So, it's compostable, but as far as any type of animal product goes, same thing goes with milk and dairy and cheese and all that good stuff, is you can run into some pest issues. Sometimes I'll come in here, like it, let's say I have some extra meat that I don't want. I'll just dig a pretty deep hole where it's, nothing's gonna smell it. Put it down in there, put like, you know, two, three feet deep, cover it up, and over time it'll break down. But you may not want to get into that. There you go, friends, there you go. 10 things you do not want to put in your compost pile. Like I said, some of those you may or may not want to. So, you know, like clothes are an option, meat is an option, but it does have some pros and cons to it. Y'all just need to weigh that for your situation. See if that composting material is good for you. Like I said earlier, please do comment and with questions and any uh, thing that might help other people as far as what to not put into compost bins. Later on, maybe this month, maybe next month, plan to do some composting videos where I'm showing you different types of composting, you know, heat composting, cold composting. This might have to be next spring, but I really want to do a type of composting that I learned in Zimbabwe that was awesome. It was just like a big pile. You turn it and it's just boom, the way to go. And uh, very doable as far as you don't need to know a ton before you do it, but it really works great. So that's coming down the road, but for now, y'all appreciate your time here. Thanks for being out here with the compost. And I'll see you next time on the Garden Guide channel. Appreciate y'all. God bless and keep growing and sowing. Two thumbs up. There you go, looking good, looking good.
Garden is ready for spring. Thank you.